So moving on to our next set of notes and really the next kind of perspective on personality in Unit 10 is the humanistic perspective. And notice that we've got some smiley faces hugging teddy bears and rainbows, right? We're kind of being stereotypical here, but that's really what the humanistic perspective is, right? And believing in human growth and the inner good in people. Um, so we this a lot of this is going to be review, but there is some more specifics that you need to understand, particularly these two names. So by the 1960s, psychologists have become discontented, meaning unhappy, with Freud's negativity, right? He said, we're all bad, we're all sexual aggressive beasts that are controlled by our unconscious and we're just like pawns of our little unconscious. Um, and the mechanistic psychology of the behaviorists and that we're just pawns of other people who make us do things through reinforcement and punishment. So Maslow and Carl Rogers kind of gave a more positive spin to things which was very welcomed at the time. So the humanistic theory emphasizes the idea that individuals control their own behavior and that they aren't controllable by simply methods of operant conditioning. Um, views human nature in a much more positive light, believing that we are all innately good, whereas the psychoanalytic perspective is believing we're all innately bad. A very popular perspective at its time because it was so person-centered. So think of the societal ideas of the 1960s, right? The hippies and stuff, and that it's all right, man. Like, we're good. We are good inside, not these evil beings. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, again, review from Unit 8, but just a quick reminder, refresher, that once your needs on the bottom here, the biological and psychological needs are met, then you can move up to the next rungs, right? You can move up to safety needs and focus on those. Once those are met, you can move up. Much of the world not really getting beyond these lower two levels. So the top level is where we're going to focus most of our time, especially um, with the personality unit in humanism. So ultimately Maslow believed that we are trying to reach this state of self-actualization or fulfilling our unique potential. And something I want you to write down is that self-actualization is when you are working hard to become the best you and who you are. So he believed this desire exists in all people but is often not achieved by a lot because of the lower levels not being met. Um, so we need to understand these self-actualizing characteristics and that we accept ourselves unconditionally. Like I am a good person, I accept me, my worth according to me is not dependent on anything. I am worthy. And they're spontaneous and they're natural. They have a democratic nature. They like their privacy and that they're not, you know, flaunting everything for the world to see. They focus on problems outside of themselves. They have a strong ethical and moral sense. They're close. They have close yet limited number of friends. And they're very realistic, right? Like, I get this. Carl Rogers is the other name. Rogers also believed, he also believed in individuals' personal growth tendencies and idea that people are naturally good. Now, this central feature of personality, according to Carl Rogers, is self-concept. This is our perception of our abilities, our behaviors, our characteristics. If we have a positive self-concept, we tend to act in positive ways. Okay, so if we see our abilities like, I am able to do this, then we have a positive self-concept. So for an individual to grow, Roger said that we must have these three things, meaning in order for us to have that positive self-concept, we've got to have genuineness, be open with our feelings, and drop these facades of I'm hurting inside, but you know what, I'm going to put on this face and I'm good to go. Second is acceptance. We get rid of things called conditions of worth. Make sure you have it down in your paper that we do not want conditions of worth set on ourselves or set from other people on us. So um, let's say a son growing up has a dad who really wants him to be the ultimate football star and the son feels that unless he is working hard in football and succeeding and playing really well in football and getting recognized by local recruits and such, he doesn't feel that his dad's going to pay much attention to him and therefore doesn't think that his dad loves him outside of football. 
or um, you think maybe your parents aren't going to like you very much or even love you or think you're worthy unless you are a very successful student in school. Um, but then you must also, for this acceptance piece, you must have from others and offer to others unconditional positive regard. So this would be a lack of conditions of worth and that you don't have conditions of worth those around you unconditionally positively regard you and that I'm going to love you unconditionally because I know that you are good and you need to have this for yourself as well and then lastly is empathy so sharing and mirroring our feelings and reflecting meanings for others and that you are able to put yourself in other people's shoes and experience what they experience not just feel sorry for them so assessing the self in an effort to assess personality, because that's what this unit's about, right? Like learning about our personality and assessing it. Rogers asked people to describe themselves as they would like to be, as in their ideal self and as they actually are, their real self. So if the two descriptions were close, ideal self, real self, the individual had a positive self-concept. If there were lots of differences and that my real self is I'm okay at school, but my ideal self is I'm top of my class, then we don't have that positive self-concept. All of our thoughts and feelings about ourselves in an answer to the question, who am I, refers to self-concept. So this is how we are assessing personality and humanists do that by assessing one's self-concept. So evaluating the humanistic perspective, again, with all of the perspectives we're looking at in Unit 10, you've got to be able to critique them, to criticize them. So here's how we do this with humanistic. Humanistic psychology has pervasive impact on counseling, education, child rearing, and management. So these being kind of positive, right? Um, but then also how we critique them later. Concepts in humanistic psychology are vague and subjective. Right, they lack scientific basis. Like, can we really scientifically measure the self and therefore personality? Not really. And then individualism can lead to self-indulgence, selfishness, and corruption. So there needs to be um, careful, needs to be careful emphasis there. And so the critique is that it's too much about the self. So if the buzzword of humanism is self, the criticism is then, well, you're fo focusing too much on the self. 